Hello everyone, in this presentation we will discuss the operation of master slave JK flip flop. In the previous class we discussed the operation of JK flip flop. We use JK flip flop because there are some disadvantages in D flip flop and SR flip flop. In SR flip flop as we already know when the value of the input S is equal to 1 and R is equal to 1 the output is unpredictable we don't use that so in order to overcome this disadvantage we use JK flip-flop this is the logic diagram of clock JK flip-flop which is negative edge triggered the JK flip-flop overcomes the disadvantage of unpredictable output because of this feedback that is a JK flip-flop makes use of this feedback to overcome the problem of unpredictable output which is observed in SR flip-flop. But in JK flip-flop also we find that when the value of J is 1 and the value of K is 1 and the value of clock is high then the output of the JK flip-flop keeps on changing continuously from 0 to 1. This is what we call racing or the race around condition which is observed in JK flip-flop. But racing is definitely not a desired output because we cannot predict the output in this case. So, we do not use racing in anything. So, what we use? We use toggling instead of racing. There is difference between racing and toggling. Racing is an uncontrolled phenomena whereas toggling is a controlled phenomena. And so, we will have to overcome the problem of racing in case of JK flip-flop. There are three ways by which we can overcome the racing and obtain toggling out of this racing conditions. So these are the three conditions to overcome racing. The first method is to keep the clock half time period less than the propagation delay of the flip flop. Let capital T be the time period of the clock. So, the value of t by 2 should be less than the propagation delay of the flip flop. But practically, we do not use these meth this method to overcome racing. So, the next method is the edge triggering. By using edge triggering, we can overcome the problem of racing. This method is also used. The third method is the master slave operation. This is the most important method which is made use to overcome the problem of racing. The master slave operation is the same as the negative edge triggered flip flop. So, let us now see how a master slave JK flip flop operates. As you can see in this figure, this is the circuit of a JK flip-flop. This is a simple JK flip-flop which we discussed in the our earlier class. And in case of JK flip-flop, we saw that the JK flip-flop makes use of this feedback to overcome the problem of unpredictable state in SR flip-flop. Now, we also saw that the problem of racing in JK flip-flop is because of this feedback. So, we will have to design a circuit so that we can eliminate the effect of this feedback. So, for this we have to add another stage that is we will have to add another circuit similar to this similar to this circuit as shown in this figure. So, we have removed this 
feedback and we have added a circuit similar to this one and we have taken feedback from this second stage to the first stage as you can see in this figure and we have also added an inverter from the clock of the first stage to the clock of the second stage. This is the input J, this is the input K, this is the clock and an inverter has been given to the clock of the second stage. This is the output QN and QN bar of the second stage. So we find that this is the first stage and this is the second stage. This is known as the master and this is known as the slave. That is why this circuit is known as the master slave JK flip flop using NAND gates. Basically there are two things to remember in the master slave flip flop. The first thing is the feedback that is how to connect the feedback and the second most important thing is the clock. So we will see how this circuit works and what is the effect of complementing this clock that is what is the effect of adding an inverter to the clock of the second stage. So let's see how this master slave JK flip flop operates. Let us consider that the value of J is 1 and K is 1 and the clock is also high. So in this case we find that because this clock is high so the master will be operational and the slave will not be operational. So when the clock is high the slave will not be operational so its output will be the same as before that is it will keep the memory because the value of clock here will be low because there is an inverter he connected here so if we keep this clock high this clock will be low so the slave will not be operational and so the output will be the same as before that is the slave will keep the memory whereas the master will be operational and the value of Q will change. So we find that when the clock is high for the master, the master is operational whereas the slave is not operational. So the value of this output will change but the value of QN will remain the same as before. That is the slave will keep the memory. Similarly, when the clock is low, then the clock will be high for the slave. So in this case, the master will not be functional and the slave will be functional and so its output changes in this case when the clock is kept, when this clock is kept low, this clock is high and so the slave will be functional and so the output of the slave will change. But there is very interesting thing to going on here that is when this output changes we are having feedback from this stage to the first stage. But since the clock is low, so this master will not be operational. That means that there is no effect of this feedback on the master. That is we have eliminated the effect of this feedback and hence we have eliminated the problem of racing. So what is actually happening in the circuit is that instead of output changing continuously from 0 to 1, the output here changes only once in a clock cycle. This is the advantage of this circuit and that is what we call toggling. Now in order to understand it in a better way, we have drawn the clock and we will also see the output of the master and the output of the slave corresponding to the values of clock given to the master slave jk flip flop.
Here we find that the clock is a function of time and the value of j and k is 1 throughout. Now we will plot q that is the output of the master. We find that when the clock is high, when this clock is high, then when this clock is kept, when j is 1, k is 1 and this clock is kept high, then the master will be operational and so its output will change. Whereas in this case the slave will not be operational. So we find that when the clock is high, the master is operational. So let us assume that the value of q was low before the clock was high. So as soon as q becomes high, the value of q will change from low to high. That is we have plotted in this timing diagram. That is when as soon as this clock goes high, the value of q will become high because it was low before. So the value of q will become high because it was low earlier and it will remain high up to this clock cycle because even when the clock goes low the master is not operational so the value of q will remain high up to this cycle and again when the value of clock goes high then the value of q will change and it will become low it will remain low up to this entire clock cycle then again when the value of clock goes high the value of q will change and it will become high again it will continue up to this clock cycle again when the value of clock goes high the value of q will change to low similarly we can see that the output of the slave we find that when the clock is high, when the clock is high, the slave is not operational, so its value will remain zero. Now, when the clock becomes low, then in that case, the clock of the slave becomes high, and so the slave will be operational, and its value will change from zero to one. And again, this will remain the same till this clock cycle it will again operate only when the value of clock goes low. Then again it will remain low up to this clock cycle. Again when the value of clock goes low it will become high and it will remain high up to this clock cycle. And so this is the timing diagram of clock. This is the output of the master and this is the output of the slave. So this is what we are having as the output of the master and the output of the slave. So we see here that we have overcome this racing because the output is not changing continuously from 0 to 1 but the output is changing once in a cycle. This is what we call toggling. So if we write the values for our output that is when the value of j is 1 and k is 1 and the value of clock is also 1 then the value of qn plus 1 will be qn bar. This is what is called toggling and it is used in counters. The figure here shows the symbol for master slave jk flip-flop. As we can see from this figure, there are three inputs j, k and clock. This clock is negative triggered. That is why a bubble has been shown here. These are the outputs q and n, its complement q and bar. This is the preset input and this is the clear input. Now let me tell you what do we mean by racing. So in order to explain racing, we have again taken the clock pulse as we have shown in this figure. This is 0 and this is 1 and in this case the value of j and k is also 1. So we find that when the value of j is 1, k is 1 and the clock is 1, then we find that the output 
of the flip flop keeps on changing continuously that is when the clock goes high the output becomes high again it becomes low again it becomes high again it becomes low and it keeps on changing from 0 to 1 to 0 to 1 to 0 to 1 like this in this manner again when the clock goes low then the output of the flip flop will be 0 again when the clock goes high again there will be racing that is the value of the output will keep on changing continuously from 0 to 1 then again 0 to 1 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 and this problem is what we call as racing or the race around condition and this problem is observed in case of JK flip flop. So in order to overcome this problem of racing we use master slave we use master slave JK flip flop. So in this case we find that we have avoided the problem of racing and we have converted into it into toggling because in this case we find that even when the clock pulse goes high the value of Q and QN remains the same for one clock cycle that is we have just converted the output from racing to toggling. So I hope you understand the operation of master slave JK flip flop. So that's all for this presentation.